Uh, today I will discuss about the um, the biomass. Um, slides have been prepared by, by one of my uh, postdocs, so Theodorus. So I would like to acknowledge here. So the goal is that we would like I would like to introduce you what we can do with biomass for the energy system. Um, and it's important to look at the important numbers. So. Uh, First, what, what is the situation today? About one tenth of the energy supply is supplied today uh, in form of biomass. Okay, uh, and in the future, uh, the perspective is that on the one hand, the, the biomass will increase, so the people can produce more biomass or harvest more biomass. But of course, at the same time, the amount of energy that we will consume will increase, or unless we do uh, actions in order to reduce the energy consumption. So what we can see here is that even though the energy consumption will in, is supposed to increase, the share of the biomass is also going to increase because the people will harvest more, use better the biomass resources that are produced. And the goal of this lecture is to try to uh, first understand what is biomass and where, is com where it comes from. And then what are the different ways of converting the biomass into energy services that uh, we can um, then use for our purpose. So what is biomass? So biomass is in fact an, an energy that is coming from the sun, okay, the solar irradiation. In fact, if we look at what the sun is delivering us, it is delivering uh, two types of ways of uh, capturing the energy from the sun. Um, the one that is coming from the energy of the photons that is stored in the biomass. The one that is conver uh, converted into uh, heat that produces wind, and the one that is converted into heat that produces water, that is then uh, stored in dams that allows you to then afterwards uh, to, to convert it into um, uh, mechanical power and electricity. And then, of course, we know the uh, technical capture, which is the photovoltaic or the thermal uh, panels that allows us afterwards to supply the energy that we need in a form that is distributed and uh, eventually stored. And if you look at this uh, uh, picture here, what is important is that there is only one element that is really directly going to be uh, uh, stored, so the biomass is the stored form of the uh, solar energy harvest, harvested by nature. Okay, so what, what, is the, the, what are the typical characteristics of biomass? So the first is that the biomass is a, is a carbon hydrate. So it means that the, the chemical formula is something which has a carbon, and uh, associated with a molecule of, uh, of water. It is defined by, uh, if, if I'm using a generic definition, is um, all living matters on the earth. Okay, and this can then be trans, uh, transformed into um, the one that is harvested or energy cropped, which is, for example, the, the wheat, the poplar, which is the wood, or the switchgrass, um, they have a certain uh, efficiency per square meter of uh, land that is used for harvesting. You can see that the energy yields can be different for different types of uh, crops, uh, that energy crops that can be uh, realized. There are different forms of biomass, and I would say that the, the two and, and the two major ones are uh, the one that is, let's say, heavy. It's the, the lignocellulosic biomass, and then the wet biomass that has uh, two types of um, forms. Um, the one that is uh, the agricultural uh, product. And then all what is related to the waste that we produce. And the waste that we produce is uh, available in different forms. It can be 
the, the waste of the food that we consume and also the waste of our conversion of the energy that we have received by the food. Okay? That's why, for example, we have biomass in wastewater treatment plants. Okay? Um, and there is, in addition to the, the dry uh, and neocellularized biomass and the wet biomass, there is also another form, which is the one that is cultivated on, um, on the water, which is the, um, the, mainly the, the algae that can then be used in order to harvest uh, the solar energy. So when I'm talking about the solar energy, it's important to understand what is the principle of this conversion, which is in fact the principle of the photosynthesis. And the photosynthesis is a, a, a chemical process, in fact, that is using the, the light from the sun. Um, the elements that we have in the atmosphere, um, mainly the carbon dioxide and the, and the water, plus some um, catalysts, they are going to take the energy from the sun and they are going to uh, break the molecule of carbon dioxide that is here and transform it into a molecule of carbon hydrate. And the byproduct is the production of oxygen. And this is the system that is used in order to uh, produce stored energy, in reality food, for the living uh, animals that can then be afterwards converted into energy by our body or the body of the animals. Uh, and, and the discovery of this uh, principle led to uh, a Nobel Prize because it was really important to understand what was uh, happening in this uh, uh, in this cycle and how the uh, energy from the sun was captured by a very nice chemical process that was invented by nature. Right. So the, uh, the, the, the building block that is uh, useful for us is glucose. And the glucose is C6H12O6. Okay, it's a pure CH2O, right? Um, that we can use then afterwards to uh, supply our energy. In reality, the biomass is a little bit more complex because it's a polymer that can be converted into glucose, or they, they can be decomposed into glucose, but in reality it is based on uh, two types of molecules, the cellulose, which is a, a, a structural molecule, and then the starch, that is the reserve molecule that can be, be then converted into uh, uh, glucose later on. Okay, so something which is important is the efficiency of the, of the conversion. So if I'm receiving uh, energy from the sun. Um, I'm going to uh, finally irradiate part of the energy out of the sun, and a part of the of it is going to land on uh, places where I can grow plants. Okay, and then those plants will receive the uh, the solar energy and will convert part of it into stored energy. Okay, but the efficiency is not so high. So you can see that uh, from the total amount that the surface of the Earth received, there is only a small amount that ends up into, um, into useful uh, energy. So there is a factor uh, 40 to uh, uh, 58 that I would have even to then uh, still, so it would mean two, two or three percent of efficiency, but I still have to consider that um, the biomass production is a chemical process that has an impact on the environment, which means that I cannot install the biomass productions everywhere, um, which means that at the end, uh, only part of the total amount of area that is available for cultivating biomass can be converted in a sustainable way into energy that is useful for uh, uh, the, um, uh, for, for us. Okay, so it means that the, the efficiency uh, is penalized on the one hand by the inefficiency of the conversion process from the, the, the uh, 
energy that we receive from the sun to uh, the biomass and from the land availability. Something which is also very important is to, to realize is that there, the biomass is therefore highly diffuse everywhere because it needs land or it needs area to grow, okay? which creates a difficulty compared to the fossil fuels. So the biomass is used today um, at the level of 10% um, um, for supplying the overall energy needs of the uh, uh, of, of uh, um, the energy system, where something which is important is that it's a very brutal use, which means or archaic use. It's the out of the ten percent that is used, uh, two thirds are used for cooking, okay, or for directly heating houses. So, so it means that the biomass is used, but perhaps not in the most efficient way today. Okay. Um, I can also give you um, the biomass potential if I'm looking at uh, where we can uh, go, uh, grow the biomass. And you can see that the world has uh, a big potential that is expressed here uh, with um, the, the biomass that is the woody biomass, the energy crops, which are all the, the biomass that I would grow instead of growing food, huh? if, if uh, I'm doing energy cropping. Um, but you can see that there are a lot of potentials available. So it's important to realize that the biomass is integrated in the carbon cycle um, I'm showing here the, the typical cycle, which is the fossil synthesis that produces the, the biomass and the biomass that is used by humans and animals that uh, is then releasing the carbon dioxide again. Uh, in reality, the system is a little bit more complex because the carbon dioxide uh, will be stored for a certain time in form of, of, uh, of biomass. It means that, uh, for example, there is a part of the biomass that we will not eat which is, which is the wood that is storing the carbon dioxide for a certain time um, that can be long, uh, up, to, up to 100 uh, years, uh, and that has therefore uh, uh, an effect of capturing the carbon dioxide from uh, the atmosphere. Uh, but this biomass is only part of the whole uh, carbon cycle. The oceans are also uh, affected by the presence of carbon dioxide and will play also a role on the carbon cycle. So the, the system is not so uh, simple. Okay. Uh, the question is, uh, is the um, biomass really carbon neutral? In fact, we, it's important to uh, realize that if one, we want to use the carbon, the, the carbon dioxide that has been captured by the biomass, um, we have uh, to harvest it, which means that we are going to uh, spend energy and produce uh, environmental impact by harvesting, by transporting the biomass. Um, we can also, uh, we have also to mobilize lands. Um, and the problem is that the, the lands can be uh, in competition for the use. So you can decide that you will produce uh, wood, or you will let the wood grow, or you will produce the wood, or you will produce um, oil, palm oil, for example, and on the same, you can you can decide to do it on the same uh, piece of land, which will then create uh, competition. However, if you do it in the right way, then uh, the forest is also a way to capture carbon dioxide and to store carbon dioxide for. Uh, uh, a certain period of time, okay? And it depends on the, uh, uh, the type of, of uh, woods that you grow and uh, the, uh, well, what you will do later on with the, uh, uh, with, with the, the biomass. And of course, you can have very long-term uh, long uh, usage uh, of storage of, of uh, carbon if you take this kind of very big trees. So they are there since a long time, a very long time, 
and therefore they are storing this kind of carbon dioxide that has been captured uh, 600 years ago, for example. Okay, what is the content of the biomass? So the biomass is, is made of different uh, uh, elements. Um, the, and I, I'm showing you here the, the most important one. So the, uh, the cellulose, which is 50%, uh, the emicellulose, that is around 10%, uh, the lignin, which is a long polymer, uh, and then it's ashes, which are so the ashes are mainly coming from the fact that we need that, that the plants needs for the photosynthesis the catalysts, which are minerals that play the role of uh, in the photosynthesis cycle, and that are finally also embedded into the plants. Okay, so and and this is uh, what is uh, remaining there. So this mixture then, uh, so the, the share about the different elements in the, in, in the biomass is changing, of course, from one type to another. And what you can see is that as the chemical formula are different, they will, be, they will have different usage. Okay, we know already that uh, the, the main usage of the biomass of the wood, for example, is to make furnitures or to build houses. And we use the structure of the polymer to do, to do this. And afterwards, we will use the cellulose to make paper, right? And there will be still a rest that can then be converted afterwards into uh, other type of services like the energy services. So when we look at the uh, uh, from the energy perspective, what is in the biomass? So what we can see is that, in fact, the biomass is typically made of dry matter, which are all the polymers that I have presented, uh, and water. Water that is stored in uh, the biomass. So it means that the biomass is not dry and needs to be uh, dried if I want to uh, use what is in the biomass. Okay, and then the organic part, which is uh, in the dry matter, is divided into this, the, the, the three parts that I have um, uh, expressed. So now if I'm defining in another way the content of uh, the cellulose, the hemicellulose, and the lignin, then I can see that I have uh, a mixture that contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The fact that they, uh, and this is interesting to have because I will be able from this to deduce what will be the, uh, the heating value of the free, uh, of the, the biomass, sorry. And to de define this, in fact, there are some uh, uh, correlations that have been established that allows me to estimate what is the higher heating value of the dry matter as a function of the composition of the dry matter. So this is a correlation where you can see that the most important contributors are the, the, the carbon and the, and the hydrogen. And there is a negative contributor, which is the, the presence of oxygen. The presence of oxygen means that um, the, the biomass is already partially oxidized, okay? Because there is the, this oxygen that is included into the molecule. Now, if I want to see what is the, the heating value of uh, the, the lower heating value of the, the biomass, then I have to account for the water that will be produced by the combustion and the water that is already present and that is in the liquid form embedded into the biomass. Okay, so it means that I will have to account for the heat of vaporization that needs to be supplied in order to evaporate the water that is present. So it means that again, I will have something which accounts for the presence of the moisture, and that needs also, because I'm talking about per kilogram, to account for the amount of ash that is uh, present. Okay? Doing this, I'm able to define the lower heating value of different types of biomass, going from uh, wet sewage sludge to wine shots or straw or wood. Okay? They will have all, oh, sorry. 
they will have all a different amount of humidity, which means that they will be able to, um, they, they will need heat to evaporate the water that is included, okay? And they have different compositions that leads to different lower uh, heating value and higher heating values. So, uh, as you have a, vari uh, a big variety of different types of biomass, if you want to use the biomass, then it's important to go uh, to have uh, access to the typical values that can be observed. And there is a database that is the ECM Finis database where you can find hundreds of those kinds of biomass that can be, uh, that are uh, characterized. Nevertheless, something which is important is that the, the heating value uh, is depending mainly on the amount of carbon uh, that is available in the different types of biomass. And this is, uh, um, you can see that there is uh, a linear relationship here between the, the lower heating value and the amount of carbon that can be used in order to estimate how much uh, uh, energy we can get out of the biomass. So the biomass is, uh, can be compared to the different types of fuel. Uh, typically, the biomass has half the amount of uh, heating value than uh, fossil fuel. So fossil fuel is between 40 and 50 megajoules per kilogram. Biomass is around 20. Okay? This is the first characteristic. Uh, the second characteristic is that the biomass is not as dense as the fossil fuel. And this is also easy to understand. In fact, the fossil fuel has been produced out of the biomass, has been compacted by the high pressure in the underground, and therefore it uh, has increased its energy uh, density. Okay? Um, and then the last dimension is that uh, different types of wood or biomass can lead to different types of ash content. And the ash content means or uh, might mean problem in uh, processing the biomass. So if I have a lot of minerals, uh, I will have to see where the minerals are going to go. And if, especially when I'm burning biomass, it might happen that I will have a lot of particles that will leave, or I will have a lot of ashes created when I'm burning the biomass. And then the, the, the ultimate analysis showing that finally we have uh, a lot of carbon um, in, in weight uh, compared to the hydrogen and the uh, um, and what you can see here also with those numbers is that you have as many molecules of oxygen than or kilograms of oxygen than the kilograms of carbon which then reveals that the, the chemical formula is not far from CH2O. Okay, it's not far. It's not perfectly uh, carbon hydride, but it's not far. Okay, so now if I'm summarizing, what are the challenges of the biomass resource? On one hand, it's a low. Uh, uh, it has a very low energy. It says sorry, a low energy density, but its production is really diffuse. So we need a lot of land to produce the biomass, which means that we will have to transport the biomass, which is not really dense compared to, to the oil, which then can um, ask the questions of are there ways to densify the, the biomass so that we have to transport less or it, it is easier to store? And do we have to do some local treatments instead of transporting uh, the, the raw biomass like it is shown here? Okay. Uh, Energy crops is also creating a, a, a problem because uh, my biomass production needs water. And uh, if you are cropping, then you will have to activate the, the water resource in order to uh, produce the biomass. And you will also try to promote the photosynthesis efficiency, so the number of uh, megajoules per square meter uh, harvested which means that you are going to use fertilizers and producing fertilizers might need that you might mean that you will you will uh, consume energy 
for producing the fertilizers and perhaps also create environmental impact related to, to this um, uh, dim uh, to, to, to these needs. Okay? And then the other dimension is that if you want to industrialize the uh, production of biomass, you will try to uh, uh, homogenize the, the biomass that you are going to harvest, which will then create problems on the biodiversity. If you have very, very big lands where there is a single type of crops, uh, typically then the, the animals uh, or the biodiversity is not preserved. And the last dimension is of course that biomass production or energy production from the biomass is going to compete with the energy that we need, so with the food. Okay? Uh, sometimes it's uh, uh, here we say that it would not be considered as being a problem, but there are examples where the, the land in Africa is used to produce uh, biomass that is used for producing bio oil, for example, which is using the land that was previously used by the people there to harvest their own food. Okay, and in this case, it would mean that the people that are happy to have bio, they are naming them as being green because they are using biofuel, are perhaps then taking the uh, the food out of uh, the mouth of uh, people. Okay, so this is uh, of, of course, uh, of course, uh, an ethical problem. So, do you have questions about the biomass characteristics? Let's say. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, no, the fixed carbon is is different because the so the, the it's. Um, so the, the carbon is the building block of the bio, of the biomass. The ash is what is the, is the mineral content. Okay, and you will see when when we do the conversion, it's possible that part of the CH2O is going to be broken and end up into uh, the the, uh, uh, the the pure carbon. Okay, which will de be added to the uh, ash itself. So the, it means that there will be a uh, uh, remains of carbon that will be in a solid form, that will uh, be carbonized, and that will then be uh, coming in addition to the ash, which is more the, uh, the minerals dimension. So, and the minerals have to be there because they are needed for producing the biomass. Okay, and this is what is harvested from the soil huh? and, and given by the fertilizers. So it's pot potassium, uh, um, uh, nitrogen, and uh, NPK, and, and uh, potassium, and phosphorus. Sorry. Okay. Other questions? Okay, so if there are no questions now, I'm going to then uh, describe with you uh, what are the different pathways to convert biomass. And I will start with the thermochemical conversion. So the thermochemical conversion is, um, in fact, depending on the temperature at which I'm operating, I will have different types of operation. So if I am at very low temperature, what, what I'm going to do, with, if I'm supplying heat to the biomass, I'm going mainly to evaporate water. So you know when you try to start a fire of, on a wood log, that the first uh, seconds or minutes even, are producing a very white smoke, okay? Because the temperature is very low. And what is happening is that the energy is used to evaporate water. The water is embedded, okay? If I'm increasing the temperature then, the, the low organic volatile compounds, so the polymer starts to break and the, the ends are going to be evaporated. Okay? And this is happening when you do torrefaction. So torrefaction is uh, a, a, a process in which the heat is used in order to produce very light compounds, uh, and those compounds can be burned afterwards, okay? and then supply, uh, uh, supply the heat that is needed. 
if I'm increasing even more the temperature, then all the molecules are going to start to break, but they will not break into very small molecules, they will break into long molecules. And if you have those molecules in the gas uh, stream and you uh, take the, uh, you cool it down, then all those molecules will condense and you will have an oil. Okay, well, this operation is named the pyrolysis. Now, if I'm increasing more the temperature, then those medium-sized molecules will uh, then break by the effect of the heat. Okay, and they will break and they will produce uh, a syngas. A syngas is a mixture of carbon dioxide, of carbon uh, monoxide, and hydrogen. And if I'm increasing in addition to temperature, I will then go to uh, the, 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 the combustion. In order to realize, to supply this heat, what I can do is that I can use uh, oxygen, uh, oxygen. Oxygen can uh, burn what is going to be evaporated from the wood and supply the heat that is needed. So I can burn the, 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 the low, uh, the volatile compounds of uh, the biomass and do torrefaction. Uh, I can also, by injecting oxygen to a mixture of, uh, a mix of biomass, I can burn part of the evaporated uh, volatile carbon and let the temperature increase. And finally, have something which is a mixture of carbon dioxide that, he, that is produced by the combustion and liquid fuels. And if I'm increasing still the, the, the amount of oxygen, then I will go towards the combustion. And if you remember how a fire is starting when you, when you uh, try to uh, uh, make a fire of, uh, on, on wood, you will see that in the beginning you will have the, the white smoke, which is the water that is leaving. And after a certain time, you will see that the, the flame is going to change the color. And the fact that the flame is changing the color is because what is burning is different. So in fact, the fire is not inside the wood, but is outside the wood when the oxygen is, is put in contact with, with the gas that are evaporated out of the biomass that is uh, decomposing. Okay? And that's why you have this flame that is coming out of the, uh, of, out of the wood. Which means that uh, if I want to understand what are the different ways of converting uh, the biomass, the thermochemical way, in fact, I will have first. So I will have first to realize that the major or uh, the most used conversion process is the thermochemical process that is going to go towards pyrolysis, gasification, or combustion. And of course, the first one is combustion. Combustion is, has been learned in the past, so 400,000 years ago, the human discovered the fire. This has changed the life. So with, without this discovery, I'm not sure that we would have been here, right? Um, and we have made a good evolution about what we have learned from the combustion, which is just putting a box around the fire and recovering more heat. So today, a uh, boiler, um, even a biomass boiler, can have an efficiency of, of 90%, uh, percent, uh, with uh, sometimes um, uh, some drawbacks. So for example, the, 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 the particulates that are emitted, or the NOx that are emitted, uh, or the, the carbon monoxide that is emitted because the combustion is not well managed. But nevertheless, this is one of the major uh, applications that we know out of, uh, uh, of, out of the biomass. And of course, it is related to uh, not only the use as heat, but it can also be uh, used in cogeneration units, combining a boiler with a ranking cycle to cogenerate electricity and heat. The other approach is uh, the pyrolysis versus end gasification steps. So the idea here is that by using heat, we produce uh, a gas or a liquid that can be used as a fuel. 
The first uh, dimension is, is torrefaction. So torrefaction is low temperature and aims mainly at, at drying the wood, making, making the wood more uh, uniform. And uh, drying means you need heat, and the way you will use the, uh, you, you will uh, supply the heat is by burning part of uh, uh, the gas that is obtained when you heat up the biomass. Okay? The efficiency of a torrefaction is around uh, 90%. So 90% of uh, the lower heating value of the biomass is ending into uh, the um, uh, is ending in, into a, a torrefied product. The torrefied product is more homogeneous, can be much easily uh, processed, uh, which means that it is a much more uh, easy to handle fuel, right? Uh, However, we have consumed a certain amount of energy for realizing the conversion. Okay? The fact that it has lost a lot of water uh, has also a big advantage if you have to transport it because it has a higher density and therefore you can transport more uh, um, uh, energy per, per unit of uh, kilogram. Um, the second dimension is, is uh, the pyrolysis when I'm increasing uh, the temperature. If I'm increasing the temperature, what, what is going to happen is that I will have, I will produce more and more gas at high temperature. And if I'm condensing those gases, then I can, uh, I can uh, produce uh, uh, liquid fuels, which are made bio oil. I show you here the composition of a typical uh, pyrolysis process. Uh, in which the, the wood is first dried, then it is pyrolyzed, okay? Uh, and the, the pyrolysis is going, uh, is needing heat, and you will need, you will produce the heat from the residue of uh, the production. So it means that when you have here the, the pyrolyzed products, part of them will be the one that you, you want, and the rest, which is Meaning the char can be used uh, in a combustion process to supply the heat that is needed for the pyrolysis to reach the 50 100 degrees C that are needed by uh, the pyrolysis. And here I'm giving you, and sorry I have added the slides, so uh, the one who have printed uh, will have to download uh, the new uh, version. Um, so I, just to, to let you know, so around 70% uh, efficiency, so from the uh, heating value that is entering the process towards the, the heating value of the co-generated uh, the co-generated oil, uh, which means that 30 percent of the of the energy is not anymore uh, available as as uh, stored energy, but can perhaps be used for other purposes because those 30% are still there and can be used, okay? So this is for the pyrolysis, where something which is quite difficult is that the mixture that we obtain here is quite difficult to handle, and it depends on, uh, highly on the temperature, which means that the quality and the composition of the oil that we recover at the end is not really stable and has oxygen in it, which is creating problems of stability, okay? Uh, and from there, it means that the magic system that appears to be here, which has uh, quite good efficiency, uh, will not be really practical in reality because you expect to use this oil in your engines. Okay? And if the quality of the oil is always changing, uh, you have more heavy or less heavy materials in it, then you will not be happy with, with, the, with your engines. Which means that typically those processes, although they appear to be quite interesting, would in fact require from this amount here to go into a refinery where uh, the oxygen has to be taken out most of the time with hydrogen being added to the, to the flow 
and then a distillation will have to be done in such a way that the, you will reach the uh, specifications of uh, an oil that is distributed uh, inland. And the other way to uh, convert the, the, the wood by a thermochemical process is by uh, breaking all the, mo the molecules towards very small molecules like the, the CO and the hydrogen. So those are the smaller building blocks. In this case, I'm transferring the energy that is stored in the biomass into the energy that is stored in a gas flow. The fact that I'm using CO is, and, and hydrogen is at the end quite interesting because this is how the petrochemical industry is producing all the chemicals that they need from the oil. So this is a process that is at the end quite uh, similar to what we know from the uh, oil uh, conversion. The, the efficiency of the conversion from uh, biomass, lower heating value, to the syngas, there's a mixture of CO and hydrogen heating value, is around 80% which means that we have to be smart in doing the conversion in the, uh, the gasification in the right way, in such a way that we will uh, recover the heat that is released by this uh, operation, um, which would then increase the overall efficiency of uh, the system. So gasification can be done by, your own, uh, by yourself. So you can uh, just heat uh, biomass, uh, in a box and, and look at what is coming out. Okay? Um, and you will have a mixture of CO and hydrogen that you can burn. Um, and in fact, this was um, already done in the past. And I'm showing you here a picture of a, a track here, which, is, uh, which has a, a gasifier in it. And the reason for uh, why those people were using a gasifier on their, on their tractors here is mainly because they were running, running out of oil during the Second World War. Okay? And so the way they were doing it, so you can see that there, really, there are locks here. The locks are sent into a gasifier here, which is producing gas uh, that is uh, uh, then uh, cleaned and then sent uh, at the end to the uh, combustion, internal combustion gases he, uh, engine here. So those are the two, uh, the cooling system and then the purification system that you can send to the, the motor. So this was um, a well-known uh, or, or already well-known approach, which was mainly due to the fact that we were missing oil. Okay. So the gasifier can be of different types. I'm, I'm not going to explain uh, all the, 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 the types of gasifier. So what is important is that for gasification, you need uh, a gasifying agent that can be either air, oxygen, or steam. Okay? Uh, if you inject something that has oxygen, so it means air or oxygen, then you will use the oxygen as an oxidating agent in order to supply the heat. So the heat will be directly supplied by partial oxidation. Okay? And you will then supply the heat for the gasification. If you are using steam, um, steam uh, is not going to supply the heat, so it means that something else has to be used, and you will have to heat up the system uh, externally. Externally means that you can do it uh, by heating from outside or by circulating uh, the biomass in a, system like, uh, in a system like this, where you can then supply the heat by combustion. So this is what is done here, for example. So uh, you inject uh, air or steam in the, in the uh, air, so, sorry, you inject steam in the system to produce the syngas. Um, and the materials here are going to be uh, heated to supply the syngas. And part of uh, the materials, which are mainly the char, so the part of the carbon that is not going in the gas, uh, is going to be burned uh, in the boiler, the, the combustion uh, system here, to heat the freed materials, uh, the freedized bed material that is going to be sent back 
to uh, the gasifier as a heat tire. And by doing this, I'm going to transfer the heat of combustion, which is here, uh, to the diaspect materials here. Uh, that will be cooled down here by supplying the heat that is needed in order to make the gasification. And by doing this, then we will be able to produce uh, uh, syngas. And the advantage of using this method compared to a direct uh, injection of uh, uh, air is that the syngas here will not have uh, nitrogen uh, as, uh, as a gas coming out of the system. The gas cleaning is very important because we are never sure that we will convert everything. Okay? Uh, there will be always a small amount of big molecules that will come out with the syngas. The syngas will be the major uh, compounds, so the carbon monoxide and the hydrogen, but it will also happen that I will have a uh, more um, long, longer churn, a uh, hydrocarbon. Ch uh, chains that might also include nitrogen uh, in, in it. So which means that at the end we will have uh, uh, a mixture of gas that needs to be cleaned if we want to be able to use it. Okay? So the gas cleaning will be uh, really important. And once we will have done th this cleaning, then we can use this syngas uh, for different applications. We can directly convert it to electricity, so going in a gas turbine, going in a fuel cell, and produce heat and electricity. The advantage is that as soon as we are in a gas form, then we know how to deal with the conversion. Okay? Uh, we can also um, uh, realize that the synthesis that is in the syngas is also a synthesis gas that allows us to produce liquid or uh, gas uh, fuels. So first, some examples. So uh, the, the first example is a co-combustion in which, in fact, the, uh, we can use, we can add the biomass, uh, gasified or not, uh, with, a coal, uh, with a coal in a coal plant. And in this case, it would reduce the carbon dioxide emissions because we are using the coal, the, the, the biomass as a source of energy. Or you can do gasification, which then uh, uh, go into the combined cycle with the gasification that you have seen. Or you can use an internal combustion engine that can use the same gas as a fuel after the gas clean. Um, and this is used, for example, here in Gussing in, 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 uh, in Austria uh, for supplying heat and electricity for a uh, via a district heating system. The fact that we have uh, carbon monoxide and hydrogen allows us also to produce chemicals like methanol. Okay? And methanol can then be converted afterwards into a, a list of base chemicals that can be used for producing plastics or uh, other paints, uh, solvents that are needed by the industry. Which means that now I have uh, not only a way to convert the, um, the uh, biomass into <coughs> energy, but into chemical products. And I'm showing you the, the, the products here, fertilizers, and then all the base chemicals that can be used to produce uh, plastics and, and chemicals that we need everywhere. Okay? Uh, and this type of process will be in competition or in synergy with the production of fuel. Okay? With the same uh, molecules, the, the common monoxide and hydrogen, I can also produce fuel. Methanol is a fuel, dimethylether is another fuel, and uh, all the hydro uh, uh, carbon uh, molecules can also be uh, generated. So, and one of the major uh, way of um, converting carbon monoxide and hydrogen into liquid fuel uh, was invented during the Second World War, where the Germans were lacking oil and they were fighting for oil, in fact. But at the same time, they said, okay, but we have local resources, coal. Okay? And we can use the coal uh, by injecting oxygen to it, we can produce CO, and by injecting uh, 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 water, we can have 
uh, the hydrogen. So if we can then uh, use the CO and the hydrogen to produce uh, a hydrocarbon, it would be perfect. And they have discovered the uh, uh, catalyst, uh, which allows to do this at a temperature of around 400 degrees C. And it allows you to produce, depending on the temperature level, uh, diesel or gasoline. Okay, so the liquid fuels that we would be happy to uh, obtain. So it means that at the end we have, by applying this kind of techniques, we can produce liquid fuels, but we can also produce uh, gas fuel, like methane. Okay? And methane can then be produced and distributed where we want and substitute the conventional methane that, methane that is distributed in the gas grid. Something which is important is that if we look at the chemical formula, the fuel is always coming with a certain amount of uh, carbon dioxide. Huh? And the synthesis operation, so the transformation from CO to, uh, uh, no, so, sorry, from wood to uh, different uh, uh, synthesized molecules is exothermic, which means that the conversion efficiency will always uh, end up with a certain amount of heat available. Okay, the, the longer the chain, the, the hydrocarbon chain is. So, for example, here, if I'm producing a liquid fuel, the more heat will be released out of the system. And so, for example, here, the biomass uh, is converted with an efficiency of 43 percent into fuel. Uh, if I have smaller molecules, then the exothermicity is lower. And by the fact that the, the exothermicity is lower, I will have less heat leaving the system, and therefore I will have more energy available in the uh, fuel that is produced. So I can, all, um, I can have a, a simple flow sheet like this, but in reality there are a lot of options that I'm showing you here, just for your information, which shows the variety of different types of processes that can be imagined in order to convert biomass into stored energy. And I think that this is the key for uh, the, uh, the biomass is go from a stored energy but is, is, which is not dense into a stored energy and easy to distribute, being fuel or uh, natural gas that can uh, be uh, with a high density and with a, a storage media that we know, so times, okay, that we know how to handle. So there are other types of uh, very nice processes uh, like the hydrothermal gasification, which is there when we have very much of water that is coming together with the, the, the hydrocarbons. In this case, one of the key is uh, the fact that we have to deal with a huge amount of water. And the idea here is to go into supercritical conditions. And when you go to supercritical conditions, there are two things that are going to happen. Uh, you can gasify the biomass uh, in uh, vapor uh, in a vapor in environment, um, and you will do it at a, at a temperature which is around 300 to 400 degrees C, which means that you are from the chemical equilibrium, equilibrium going to produce mainly methane. Uh, in addition to this, when you go into the supercritical conditions. The salts, which are the ashes that we were talking about, are not soluble anymore in water. So it means that they are going to leave as a solid. And you will then therefore separate the salts first, and then have a mixture which is water, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and methane, that you will then afterwards process, condense the water, and you will have pure water. And the remaining part will be methane with carbon dioxide that you can then afterwards clean in order to have the methane that you would distribute uh, uh, to the, uh, the gas grid. Okay? Uh, efficiency of the system is around uh, 60 to 70 percent, so it means that uh, at the end you recover a huge amount of the energy that is, uh, was available. And 40 percent of the energy is available in form of heat, so it means that you have to install the process, the conversion process, at the right place to use the waste heat. Okay. 
talking about waste heat, it's uh, sometimes uh, it is important to introduce the, the other way of converting biomass by using biochemical routes. So, for example, I can produce out of the biomass, I can produce biomethane. The biomethane is, is a biochemical process that needs bacteria to be realized. Uh, there are different types of, of those processes. Um, the low temperature, medium temperature, and the high temperature one. And the difference between the, those uh, different temperatures is uh, defined by the different types of uh, bacteria that we will use to produce the methane. Uh, those processes operate in, uh, in a, a liquid environment because it's low tension, okay? And you need to fix the bacteria somewhere. Uh, they typically produce half methane and half carbon dioxide because it is coming from the stoichiometry of uh, the, uh, the biomass. So biomass is CH2O. So if now I want the, those molecules to, to leave, uh, part will go to CH4 and part will go to CO2, okay? So it means that I will have uh, 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 this uh, effect. One of the difficulties is that it, it is using uh, a living cell, and which means that we have to accept to go at the speed of nature, which typically is quite slow. And the fact that it is slow means that we will have to wait a long, a long time, and this translates into big volumes. Okay, so if you have to wait, you have to uh, uh, you have to uh, spend more volumes. But the advantage of the system is that it's, it's uh, something that is already well known that can be uh, easily custom made. So because you just need a big uh, pot and you have to add the right. Uh, bacteria to it, uh, with some risk is that the bacteria uh, might be killed by toxic, uh, toxic uh, uh, compounds, and the toxic compounds can be produced during the process of the production of uh, methane. So it means that uh, the, the, the operation and the content of the biomass will have a big effect on which win uh, on, on the operation of the system. I'm giving you here some information about the, the biomethane production that can be uh, produced out of different types of waste, of biomass waste. So I remind you that all the biomass that is processed in, in, uh, uh, in, in the biological way will be done in a liquid form, so it means that it's better to uh, convert the already wet biomass uh, by uh, biomethanization. Okay? Um, and for, for your information, then you can see that we can, uh, that, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm showing you the two types of the wet biomethanization at medium temperature and higher temperature, the dry biomethanization, and they produce different uh, amounts of, uh, of methane. And of course, if I have then afterwards to supply the methane on the grid, I will have to separate the carbon dioxide from the hydrogen using, for example, a membrane system. But in this case, I will have the carbon dioxide that will be a green carbon dioxide that can either be uh, sequestrated or uh, recycled as a carbon dioxide product. Uh, another biochemical process that can be also activated when I want to convert biomass into energy, stored energy, is the fermentation. So the fermentation is well known, that's the processes that is used to produce alcohol, uh, beer, uh, for example. Um, and alcohol is an energy carrier. So when you drink al alcohol, you have also you are also using the uh, you are going to use the uh, uh, the energy of the ethanol that is in the alcohol that uh, you drink. So in fact, now what I can do as well is to um, 
optimize the system in such a way that I will um, that I will produce a lot of energy out of this eternal production. Um, what it means is that on the one hand I will try to uh, have all the sugars that are needed in the fermentation here by pre-teating the biomass. And pre-teating means uh, use heat to, to break the molecules or use a solvent that would extract the molecules and break the molecules again uh, or a combination of uh, those different elements so that I will have a lot of sugars that are available from fermentation here. You know that fermentation is producing alcohol and at the same time carbon dioxide, so I will have again the same kind of ratio between the carbon that is ending as an energy carrier and the carbon that is leaving the system in form of uh, carbon dioxide to evacuate the amount of oxygen that was uh, in the original formula here that cannot, that will not leave in form of the of the uh, of the of the energy uh, carrier, and therefore will have to leave in form of carbon dioxide. The fermentation process can be used in order to produce uh, the um, uh, fuel, but it can also be used as a basis for producing uh, chemicals. Something which is also uh, important, so the, uh, in fact, the, the alcohol production is, is well known. Uh, many, the alcohol production from sugarcane, especially in Brazil, where they produce a lot of sugarcane, and co-produce uh, ethanol. And they are using ethanol in their cars, okay? And it was a way for them to not depend on the petrochemical uh, source of, uh, or the fossil fuel source of uh, uh, carbon. Now something which is also important to realize is that the conversion process is not so efficient, so 30% around. But if you combine uh, the system in order to, for example, produce, uh, co-produce electricity, then the efficiency will, will be higher. And if you combine the alcohol production with the thermochemical conversion of the waste of the alcohol production, namely by gasification and then a synthesis process, then you will realize that the efficiency reaches uh, the order of magnitude of 70%. So it's, again, the possibility of producing uh, uh, a huge amount of uh, stored energy based on the biomass uh, resources. Similarly to uh, the syngas route, there is also the possibility of co-producing chemical products out of biochemical uh, processes, which gives you, in fact, a little list of products that most of the chemical industry will be happy to have in order to make the products that everyone uh, needs. So it means that the biomass is not only a source of energy, but can also be a source of carbon. The day where we will not extract any more carbon out of the earth or from the fossil resources. Okay, so it means that, the, and this is also an important dimension because it means that uh, the biomass can uh, play another role than just supplying energy to our uh, society. And I have also to, to, to discuss about an, an another way of uh, extracting energy out of biomass is all the oily biomass. So it means the, uh, the biomass that is producing oil by nature. And this oil can be extracted and can be processed many well using methanol, and the methanol can then be produced by gas, for example, production from biomass, uh, in order to produce biodiesel. And the biodiesel has uh, the same characteristics as the diesel that we use in cars. And in reality, you have to know that already today, there are some uh, that you have when you use a car that is using diesel, you have biodiesel which, which, that is uh, available. Of course, you need crops to, uh, you, you need sources of uh, oil, which means that you have to do energy cropping for doing this, which can be a problem because then it will be in competition with food. Uh, 
especially on the water and the land uh, use. And we know that today, for example, we have big problems with, with the palm oil, and the palm oil is uh, really in competition with nature, and by the fact that we have with, with food, and if we have to increase the efficiency of the production of palm oil, then we start to, cutting, to cut trees and use a lot of fertilizers, which means that at the end, the solution is perhaps not the best one from uh, the end use point of view. Uh, Biodiesel can also be produced by algae, uh, which means that I would, we would go into, uh, into water, use very small um, uh, organisms that are going to grow and produce the, uh, those algae that contain a lot, of, a lot of oil that can be then extracted and transformed into diesel. Okay? The remaining part can even be um, uh, 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 She has to record that each week she's coming. <laughs> okay. Um, so the, the algae produce oil, and the byproduct is wet biomass that can still be converted if we want with hydrothermal uh, processes. Okay, and then this is uh, again, if you choose, you have to choose the right. Uh, the right uh, uh, source of uh, microorganism. Compared to conventional uh, photosynthesis efficiency, the microalgae uh, are, have a much higher performance. Okay, so it means that uh, the idea of processing algae uh, is not bad if we want to exploit the photosynthesis. But what I would uh, conclude about this is that. Uh, it is even, uh, even better to produce high-value produ products when you use microalgae. Okay? Like you can produce uh, spirulin or um, other pharmaceutical products uh, out of microalgae production. And with the remaining part, so the one that is not useful, then you can produce the energy sources that uh, you would like uh, to use. Uh, to so at the end, so the, the biofuel is already produced today. A lot of methanol is produced, but uh, diesel, uh, biodiesel is also uh, has a significant share. So the, in, in North America, uh, the ethanol is, is uh, predominant, and this is mainly because uh, the, the, the US administration is giving a lot of money for the uh, farmers to produce crops, which then is converted into, into ethanol. Um, Why in Europe, mainly what uh, the, the, the idea is, is the production of bio, is mainly production of biodiesel because we are under pressure on uh, the land use. What is important is from the environmental perspective, sometimes the biomass production emits more carbon dioxide than the amount that it substitutes on the services. And this is especially the case when you look at the ethanol production based on corn. So you need so much fertilizers to produce the corn, and the corn conversion has a so low efficiency, if you are, you are not optimized, that uh, at the end you are emitting more carbon dioxide by using the, uh, the bioethanol than by uh, using conventional oil, okay? And this depends, of course, of the type of uh, uh, energy cropping that you are doing and the place where you are doing it. And here I'm just showing you uh, the kilometers that uh, can be um, uh, that can be um, made per hectare of uh, crops. Huh? So, so it means that if you uh, uh, if you have uh, if you want to drive 3,000 kilometers, then you need, uh, you, have, you need one hectare of uh, harvesting. Okay, so we'll, we'll do this one here. Okay, and this is the greenhouse gas emissions that are emitted, not the one that are avoided. 
which means that at the end there are different types of um, uh, of environmental impact that are related to the biomass. So the the and, and according to the different types, so if it is biodiesel, bio al the alcoholic uh, transformation, or the synthetic natural gas uh, production, we, when you compare it with the amount of emissions that you have in uh, the fossil uh, resources, you can see that some of the uh, biomass-based uh, fuels emit more than the amount of carbon dioxide that they should avoid. Okay? Which means that at the end, you can see that the most uh, interesting ones are the ones that are based on uh, <coughs> converting uh, methane, for example, producing methane out of wood, where you can reach uh, a substitution of uh, efficiency, which is much higher. Uh, mainly because you are not copying the wood for uh, producing the, uh, the fuel. Okay. Uh, and of course, cost is also important, but uh, energy is very cheap, perhaps not paid at the right price. Okay. And, uh, and the cost is uh, obviously taking into account not only the conversion process, but the harvesting one, which means that we have to pay people to process the land. Okay, and to harvest the biomass. And this can then uh, lead to uh, an increase of cost, but it has a value to the society because it, it gives jobs to people. Right? So at the end, uh, and this would be my conclusion, so the... I don't like the relation. So the biomass is a stored uh, energy uh, renewable energy resource that can that is diffuse so it can replace fossil fuel in the different types of applications so producing heat producing electricity or producing producing uh, um, fuel that can uh, fuel your cars and producing uh, products okay uh, the fact that it is uh, uh, diffused and produced on a given uh, a land area means that it is scarce, meaning that we have to convert it with the highest possible efficiency as soon as we do an, uh, uh, energy cropping. We do not have to forget that part of the biomass that we have access to is waste biomass. So it's the waste of the pulp production. Uh, the, in the pulp and paper industry, it's a waste of the chemicals that we would produce uh, out of the uh, in in a biorefinery. Uh, it's also the waste of our needs, so the organic waste that we can produce, um, which means that we have to think about uh, more the biomass as being uh, given uh, a priori for free because it has another value as well and that can then afterwards be converted into an energy resource for us. Okay? Um, and this would be my, my conclusion. Um, as soon as the biomass is identified and has a, uh, as an energy source, the, the next dimension will be to make it available in the right place, in the right form, which means that you have to convert it into, into the energy, the distributed energy forms being gas, oil, or electricity. Right? <coughs> uh, knowing that the electricity is, needs to be activated because it is quite difficult to store. Okay? So do you have questions about uh, biomass? So do we, if there are no questions, then uh, I will end here. And, uh, uh, don't forget that you have the speak up if you have questions um, and uh, see you next week.